Hi, Kirkwood Juniors. Today, we're going to be talking about how to create your academic plan. These are your graduation requirements. They haven't changed. English is still four credits. Social studies, you need three credits. Math, three credits. Science, you need three credits. Those are what we consider your core class, classes, English, math, science, and social studies. So most of you as juniors will have all of these completed except English, which you'll need to do for next year. Fine arts is one credit, PE is a credit, practical art you only need half a credit, same with personal finance half a credit and health per, uh, half a credit. And additionally you need seven and a half elective credits and that totals for your 24 graduation requirements. As Kapral said, uh, my name is Mr. Jevrowski. I am one of the college counselors here at Kirkwood High School. And as you move into your senior year, as you're making uh, choices uh, for your schedule, one thing that you're going to have going in your senior year is you're going to have probably more choices than ever to pick the classes that you want to take. And one of the things that you probably have been thinking about, or we, we, we hope you've been thinking about the last couple of years, is what type of career or possible college major am I interested in? And one of the things that uh, we have or we want you to look at this year is something called the career clusters. And so an example of a career cluster is right here on the screen. Uh, this would be an example of architecture and construction. So maybe you're interested in being a, an architect, maybe you're interested in being an electrician, or maybe you're interested in being an interior designer. Those are all different career paths that fall underneath um, the career cluster architecture and construction. And what you can see at the bottom of the slide here is that we do have some suggested uh, elective courses here at Kirkwood High School. So maybe you're interested in doing engineering. We do have a civil engineering and architecture class. Uh, maybe you're interested in some type of interior design. We do have a graphic design class that you can take or fashion and interior design. Those are all different elective classes that you can take that might um, that you might just want to explore and say, this is a type of career or college major I might be interested in. So I think what Ms. Caprell and I really want you all to be thinking about as you're picking out those extra classes, as you see that extra space in your schedule, what would be a real good use of your time? Maybe it's an exploration class. Maybe it's a class that's going to kind of confirm something that you want to do. And so that's one of the things to think about as you are selecting, uh, as you're doing course selection. The second thing to think about is that you are now getting to a point where what's really hard to think about next fall, most of you will be doing your applications for your next step after Kirkwood High School, whether that be the military, whether that be a uh, four-year school or two-year school. And so you want to know what those requirements are. And let me just give a couple examples. Um, there is several colleges that are going to require more classes uh, than your KHS high school graduation requirements. And let's just use uh, Mizzou, for example. Uh, one of the things about Mizzou is they do require four years of math and two years of a world language. These are both requirements that are above and beyond your graduation requirements. In order to graduate Kirkwood High School, you only need three years of math, and it is not required to take a world language. And so that's something just to think about as you're making your schedule. You may not need that extra year of math or that extra year of a world language to graduate, but you might need that for a specific college that you're applying to. And so, again, I'm not asking that you know all the schools that you want to apply to today, but what we don't want you to do is we don't want you to close a door um, when you're picking out your classes um, that you want to open when you want to apply to colleges. So that's one of the things we want you to think about is just maybe some of those extra requirements that, that might be needed. Ms. Peterson and I can certainly help you out with that. If that needs to be a longer or more individual conversation, uh, we can certainly do that. And this last slide that I want to show you here is this is just an example. Uh, I know I'm kind of cutting off on the bottom down here. I'm going to move it over a little bit. But this is just a little bit of an example of the different types of schools and what they expect in terms of uh, the college admission and the classes. And if you look at the very top, these are highly selective schools. So when you think about a highly selective school, this is something like an Ivy League school. This is a Wash U. This is a, a Stanford or a Duke. These are all uh, schools that are going to require four years of course, so four years of English, math, science, and social studies. And they're also going to want four years of a world language. So if you have your sights set on one of these types of schools, just make sure that you have these requirements going. As you kind of look at this list here, there's also what they call moderately selective. And 
And you can see they're still going to want to see four years of the core classes as well and several of a world language. If you look at Mizzou and the state schools, um, this is one that they're not going to require four years of the course, but they, they are in several areas in math and English, and, and they're going to want you to have a world language as well. Uh, if you're looking to start at a community college, a technical college, or go to the military, you can see these are some of the, the courses that you're going to have to have for graduation and to take that next step uh, in, in one of those areas for you. Once again, Ms. Peterson, I believe this can be an individual conversation, so if you have some that you want to talk specifically about, we can certainly do that. And Ms. Caprell will be back uh, to continue in this presentation. So now we need to get back into the actual courses that you are going to select for your senior schedule. Um, at the end of this presentation, we will have a how to, how to go into Infinite Campus and to see, select your courses, a little reminder. It's the same that we've done the last several years, but we'll remind you of how to do that. You can see as seniors, you have five options for classes. Um, most of your senior options are gonna be semester courses. So you're gonna choose semester um, of one and then a different class for your second semester, unless you're choosing AP Literature and Composition, which is a full year. So you see there's different emphasis on senior literatures. So the first one is cultural collisions. The second one, the emphasis is in monsters and literature. The third one is on myths, fables, and fairy tales. And the fourth one is on philosophy and literature. So you're going to be able to pick um, the classes that are most applicable to your areas of interest, and you aren't required to do specific ones. You can take them out of order, like you can take three before you take two. So the, the numbering is just to tell you the different courses that you can take. So those are your senior year options for your English credit. Math, you can see that um, above and beyond pre-calculus or algebra two, those are the options that you have. There's a lot more elective options as seniors. So this is something that I would um, ask that you talk to your current math teacher about to see what is the best placement for you for next year. Please also note that asterisk that, that some of those classes are offered for dual credit. For example, our calculus class is offered so you can get college credit as well as high school credit at the same time. So please be aware of those as well. Science, you're gonna have your science completed with what you did freshman, sophomore, and junior year. If you would like to continue in your science electives, you have these options of anatomy and physiology, space and planetary science, AP Bio, AP Chem, or AP Physics. Again, that is just if you want to take that as an elective requirement. Social studies, um, you also have completed your uh, three required courses. Other uh, social studies electives that you can take are listed at the bottom. You could take an economics class, contemporary issues, psychology, sociology, the black experience in America. Note that all of those classes are semester courses and that the AP World and AP Psych are year long classes. You have to have one year of fine art required for graduation. These fall into the area of drama, band, orchestra, choir, music theory, or art. So hopefully you have those completed, but if not, make sure that you include them in your senior year schedule so you have that credit for graduation. Same thing with practical art, you only need a semester. Those are classes within business, engineering and technology, or family and consumer sciences. PE, one full credit is required. Personal finance, you have to do that. That's a graduation requirement as well as health. The elective categories, um, anything additional. Um, so if you did a world language, that would count for elective credit, your Chinese, French, German, or Spanish. Journalism, KHTV also counts for elective. Or when content area cre credit requirements are met, additional courses in that subject will count as elective. For example, if you take that fourth year of mathematics, you only have three that are required for graduation. So that fourth year of math will count as an elective credit. Um, cadet teaching, office assistant, study focus is a quarter credit. Please be sure as seniors that you keep yourself eligible. And I'll talk about that at the end of the slide. Um, study block has no credit given. Um, IP also has no credit given. And to earn your IP, remember that you have to maintain that 3.2 GPA. Early dismissals, late arrivals as seniors, you're going to have to have 20 credits before first semester to be able to access early dismissal and late arrival. And then that number goes up to 22 credits before second semester. Um, guardian or parent approval is required. So we have a sheet that you can sign off on. 
If you're an athlete or part of choir, band, or orchestra, please be sure that you have six classes or three full credits in your schedule to participate. If you have a study block or a cadet or an early dismissal, you can only have one of those each semester. You can't have a combination or you will be ineligible to play. Remember that we have these other course options outside of Kirkwood High School. South Tech is an option, and many of you participated in that as juniors. That will still be available to you for senior year, and there are some programs that are senior year only. So please contact me if you need more information. You see all the programs are listed there on the bottom of the screen. STL CAPS, um, I didn't have any of you as juniors participate this year. So if you want to participate in STL CAPS, you see that the programs are listed there to the side. Global Business and Entrepreneurship, Engineering and Advanced Manufacturing, Medicine, Healthcare and Bioscience, Technology Solutions and Logistics, or now they have a new one in Teaching Careers and Education. These programs both are half day at Kirkwood High School and half day at the actual program. So both of these programs are application based. So the STL CAPS programs, for example, they want you to travel to a business or to a hospital to participate in actual hands-on real world experiences. If you have more questions about this, um, both programs have their applications open right now. So you can apply for next school year at this time. Again, if you have more questions, please let me know. Launch, many of you have participated in the launch virtual learning options. Um, if you have questions about what classes are offered, the website is listed there, fueledbylaunch.com. You enroll through me as your grade level counselor, so you start with me. The classes are either a quarter long, nine weeks, or the semester long, 18 weeks. You get to select um, which option you would choose for taking the class. If you wanna slam a semester course into a quarter, you are welcome to do that. You do get a grade that is factored into your GPA. Once I do the enrollment, everything else is on Ms. Nevins or Mr. Kelly. They, here, they are here to help and they can answer any questions that you have above and beyond the enrollment process. So our key planning topics, note that the schedule change policy in the course description book, you have until the quarter to drop down. Otherwise, if you wait till after second or fourth quarter, you receive an F. Um, summer school, we are still planning in the month of June of 2021. We have credit recovery for failed courses at Kirkwood High School, and then we do credit enhancement, and that was done all virtually through launch last year. I don't anticipate that will be changing. I think that it'll remain the same. Make sure to fill in alternate choices at the bottom of your academic planner. Um, as seniors, you probably have the most conflicts that go into your schedule, and so then I have to go to your backup options or your alternates. So be thoughtful in your choices. Um, when you go through the presentation that's next, and they're going to show you how to register in Infinite Campus, make sure you count the 14 gray boxes for a full and complete schedule. This does not include your alternates, and then you have to click Save at the top to keep your selections. Like Mr. Jabrowski said, if you have college and career counseling questions, he and Mrs. Peterson will be available. If you have course selection questions and you need help from me, I will certainly be available. So please reach out as we go through this process to plan for your senior schedule. Thank you. Good morning, Kirkwood. Today we are going to choose our classes for the upcoming school year and work on our plan for the future years. To start out with, you need to go to the website that we do this on, an infinite campus, And that will take you to an, the Infinite Campus screen. And the username you use is your school ID number and your password that you use every day to look at your grades. Go ahead and log in now. Logged in, you should scroll down to where it says Academic Planner and click on that. Where it says Choose an Academic Plan, you're going to make sure that you are in the correct graduation year that you're suspect, supposed to graduate in. So we're going to work on the class of 2021. If you're a different class, um, just make sure you have the correct graduation year and click Next. Your academic planner will pop up and it shows all four years of what courses that you want to be taking. So as a ninth grader, your classes should already be here under grade nine and the classes that you are taking currently. 
And um, what's important is that it also shows up here that you need to have six credits at least freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, and senior year. And that will add up to 24 credits. And you need 24 credits to graduate. Under each area, it also tells you how many credits you need in those specific subjects. So for English, you need four credits of English in order to graduate. The student is already taking one year of English this year, freshman year, so it's got one out of four. As you can see, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade for English need to be fulfilled so that they can graduate in four years. If you look down at the math requirements, you need three credits of math to graduate. This student has already taken one year and are, is currently in one year of math, so you know they've got the two out of three fulfilled. As you scroll down, you can see the requirements for each subject area. So science, you need three credits. Social studies, you need three credits. Fine arts, you need one credit. Practical arts, you need a half of a credit. Personal finance, you need a half a credit. PE, you need one credit. Health, you need a half of a credit. And electives, you need seven and a half. So let's go back up to the top and start with English. When you're looking at English, all you need to do is click on the box for sophomore year and you get your options of what English class you could take. It's either sophomore literature and composition or sophomore literature and composition honors. And so in order to get that, choose the class you want, you just click on the class and once it pops up in the box, now the student is registered for sophomore Linton comp and it says one out of one credits of English in order to graduate. So you just fulfilled your one credit for 10th grade. You click on 11th grade and you've got Junior Lit and Comp or AP Language and Composition as your options junior year. This student's going to choose Junior Lit and Comp and it's going to pop right into the box. Again, it says one out of one here. So you know you're registered for one year of English. Senior year, you're going to go to senior year and you have in a Senior Lit 1, 2, 3, or 4, or you have the AP Literature and Composition Honors uh, Composition class. And so you're going to, this student's going to try AP Lit senior year. So now you can see up here where it says English, four out of four, the student is registered for four years of English. Um, remember, right now, we are just choosing for next year's school year, the classes you want to take. So you, for ninth graders, you want to make sure your 10th grade is exactly what you want it to be. 11th and 12th grade are just a plan. We will go back each year and choose and adjust to make sure it's exactly what you want to take. So you need to fill it in for all the way through 12th grade but it is going to be adjusted each year. Okay, so what you need to make sure is, is exactly what you want to take is 10th grade, if that's the year you're registering for. Okay, let's go down to math. For math classes, we're going to click on the box, and you have Algebra 2 or Algebra 2 Honors, and they currently took geometry, is are taking geometry honors, so they're going to continue with the honors class in math. Now, when you're thinking about taking an honors class, versus the regular version, what you need to do, first of all, is talk with your current teacher. That's one of the most important things to do. And see, do they think, are you ready for that honors course? You might be in a regular class right now and you're, you want to take an honors pro course in that subject area next year. So talk with your teacher. You also have to think about what your grade is. Read what the class is about to see what the rigor is like. Talk with your parents to also see, are, do they think you should try the honors version? Are you ready for that challenge? Or if you want to take an AP course, which is a college level course, are you ready for that challenge? So there's going to be a lot of good discussions going on in the next few, few weeks as you think about what courses you want to take. Now in math, as you look at this, it also says because this student had 8th grade Algebra 1, so it says right down below they do have a full credit of 8th grade math. And then they took the geometry, so they're already two credits in. They signed up for the Algebra 3 honors. So you can see three math credits are already fulfilled from those three areas. But because colleges often want you to take four years of math in order to apply to their university, we encourage you to continue math all through high school to be ready for college-level courses. So this student, you're going to go on to 11th grade, and after Algebra 2, they're going to try pre-calculus honors, which is the sequence often people take. And then in 12th grade, they're going to try a calculus. And so they're going to have four years of math in there. But it says those two extra years that they're taking, 
is right down here. It says two credit overflow to electives. So because they've already fulfilled the three after 10th grade, because of eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, those were the three credits, two extra credits are going into their electives. In science, after physics, everybody takes chemistry. And so you have an option of chemistry or chemistry honors. And again, you're gonna talk with your teachers to see, are you ready for a chemistry honors or should you just try regular? This student's gonna try chemistry honors. And junior year, you've got biology or bi biology honors. Now for 12th grade and science, those the options are electives because you've already met your three years of science that you need to have to graduate. So if you wanna take an AP science course senior year, you're gonna find those in our electives down at the bottom of this. In social studies, you take world history freshman year, sophomore year is U.S. history or AP U.S. history. Again, an AP course is a college level course, so you wanna talk with your teacher and your parents to see are you ready for a college level course at the high school. Junior year is government or AP government and politics. The student's gonna try that. And so again, you've got your three years of social study that's in your course planner that's required to graduate. If you wanna take an elective in social studies senior year, you're going to look down in the elective category to add that. In fine arts, you need one year of fine art to graduate. So you can put that in anywhere in these years. So this student hasn't taken a fine art at all yet because it's zero. So maybe they're gonna click on the fine arts and they decide they wanna try um, photography as their fine art sophomore year and they that's a half credit you need another half credit in order to grad meet graduation requirements so they're going to plan junior year they're going to take improv in order to get their other fine art so now they have got one fulfilled if they want to take more senior year they can remember that's going to add in to their elective column in practical arts you need a half credit and this student has not taken a half practical art yet, so we're going to go ahead and the student is going to decide to take our Principles of Engineering course, and that is a full credit, and so half is met for graduation. The other half, if you look down here, says it overflows to your electives, because remember you need seven and a half electives. Now, if you're looking at your 10th grade, number you need six credits in your schedule in order to be registered as a full student so right now so far they've got 5.5 credits in their schedule for sophomore year so you only need a half credit more or you can go all the way up to seven credits if you want a full load with no study hall personal finance we recommend that maybe junior or senior year the student's going to go down they've already taken aquatics to graduate which is great um, that's one of the required courses you could also take lifetime fitness or weightlifting for a re one of the required PEs. They want to get their other semester of PE done so they don't have to take any more PE. And they're going to try the recreational sports class. So that's going to fulfill their one full credit of PE needed. They don't need to take PE then anymore for the rest of high school. And you can see now they have the six out of six credits you, they need. And this student then wants to have a study hall in their schedule. This student wants to take a study hall in their schedule next year and they've got the six credits they need to have to be a full-time student. So they are going to go down to non-credit classes because study hall block doesn't give you any classes or any credit in your schedule. So you're going to type in or you're going to click on study block and then click on study block for second semester, which is B. So they have A and B. So that's semester one is A and semester two is B. So they're going to have a full year of study block on their schedule. But remember, if you want IP in your schedule, that means independent period, your hour off where you sign in in the library, you have to get a 3.2 GPA or higher each quarter. And we will change your study block automatically to IP if you have the grades to get it. If not, you'll just be in study block. There is no IP on here, so if you ever want it, you have to sign up for study block. Okay, the next thing we wanna talk about is um, down at the bottom, you need to put in alternates. So what are the other classes that you wanna take in your schedule if you don't get the first choices that you 
selected up above. So for instance, um, if this student wants to take um, a different PE if they don't get into rec sports, so they might want to take a weightlifting class. Um, so they would scroll through. You can scroll through and look at all the options in the classes. Or a quick way to find out a class that you're looking for is all the way at the top where it says search for course catalog. You could put weights and conditioning and it pops right here. If you click on it, it shows you the description of the course. And then it says add to alternates grade 10. And that automatically put weights down here in your alternate category. Now it's we want you to have 2.5 credits worth of alternates in here and so far just one class is a half credit weights is a half credit so he this student needs to put in a lot more choices for alternates and so you can go up here the easiest way to do it is to just search up here so again if you want to search click in there let's search for foods art and science of foods one we're going to add it and click choose it as an alternate for grade 10. So we can look down here and we've got so far foods and weightlifting as alternates for 10th grade. Now as you fill that out we've got all the classes in there for 10th grade now we have to go ahead and continue filling in for 11th grade and for 12th grade because your plan needs to be completed for all four years even though that may change, your future may change, but 10th grade has to be all filled in exactly what you want and grade 11 and 12 should be filled in to six credits each, but those can change in the future. That is it. If you need help, please um, talk with your grade level counselor. Um, we will also be in the cafeteria um, at different times. Look for in announcements and we will be there to be able to help you. At the end, there is saving so you're going to save and then you are going to sign out at the top thank you so much